Today we'll be hopping into a time machine and talking about the Latin exam. Also, if you have friends from other schools or people you know studying Latin, please send this video to them. I know there's a lot, not a lot of resources out there, um, so hopefully this video can benefit them. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Darren, a first year medical student setting up Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. For those of you who are new uh, in the midst of exam period stumbling across my channel, I graduated last year with an ATAR of 99.95 and in particular a raw 45 in Latin. Latin is a subject I hold very close to my heart. I started late in year 10, but I found it incredibly rewarding and enjoyable. I loved my class, had the same teacher, same class all three of those years and it was an amazing experience. Um, congrats if you're watching this video. Latin is a very small cohort. Um, I wish you the best of luck for the Latin exam. And also, for anyone who is watching, you're probably finished with your Englishes, your maths as well, so congrats on getting all that done. With the structure of today's video, I'll be going through how I prepared for each of the three sections. There's sort of four sections, but I'll combine them into three. So the first one is the unseen. I'll be combining the comprehension and poetry into just one general advice. And in the third section, I'll be talking about the essay. Enjoy. Before we begin, I'll just talk briefly about how I split my time during the Latin exam. So the exam is two hours and 15 minutes, 15 minutes reading time, two hours writing time. With the writing time, the way I split it was 40 minutes on the unseen, 20 minutes on the comprehension poetic techniques. I feel like you either know it or you don't. You just explain it well, move on with your life. Um, and then an hour on the essay because it really required a lot of time and for me to plan and for me to think. As for reading time, I would just look at which section of the text it's from because everyone's curious and also look at the essay prompts as well but I'll spend definitely most of my time doing the unseen and rearranging it so thinking about you know which word goes with which, with which word how will I split these clauses and you can look at your dictionary as well um, which yeah I, I think I did that a little bit um, in my reading time now I would say that with uh, my actual exam my uh, unseen I think I finished it in like half an hour 35 minutes it wasn't a very hard unseen and once you've gone the crux of it the little things might get you like half a mark one mark unless there's a whole sentence you haven't figured out I would just recommend sort of moving on because you're not going to get that many marks and you really want to grab marks in the other sections um, and if there really is a sentence you can't figure out uh, maybe come back to it later if you spent quite a bit of time on it uh, but if you've got the gist of the entire unseen uh, no point really being too pedantic about the small stuff. You'd rather get done with the other sections and come back and maybe check if your um, these two words actually agree or um, or whether they don't agree. Firstly, unseens. I found unseens really cool because it's like this ancient Roman guy wrote this piece of um, writing or story or whatever, and I can still understand it and translate it. I found that pretty amazing. Uh, with unseens, there are two parts to it. The first part is the grammar, so declensions, your conjugations, your constructions, and the second part of it is vocab. I always believe that vocab is secondary to grammar, especially because you have a dictionary. What I think everyone should strive to be able to do is to rearrange a Latin sentence into English. So even without knowing any English um, translations at all, you should be able to rearrange the Latin words into an English word order. You should be able to say, these are the phrase which indicate the time of day, this is the main clause which shows what this guy was doing, etc, etc, and then slot in the definitions afterwards. So with the grammar aspect, which I think is incredibly important, take the time to bracket off your um, pieces. I used bracketing a lot, it's highly recommended in the examiner's report, and I will show a demo of me doing it now. The unseen we're looking at right now is the 2020 Latin exam, which is the one I sat. And so I'll just be going through how I bracket for the first sentence. So this sentence here. Cool. So if you look at it, usually commas indicate a bracket. So tribuni militum is its own sort of thing. Um, perfecti adversus is also its own sort of thing. Doom is also its own sort of thing. And if we look at the main clause, which is always the, the, the main point of the sentence, you know, everything else is an add-on to that main clause or an expansion to that main clause. We have this part. This and this and this. And so even with a very basic vocab, you should be able to work out the sentence structure. So we have the main clause here. Titinius and Genusius, obviously the big nominatives. 
Prakitaverund say in Insidious. So I didn't really know what Prakitaverund meant. Um, I'm pretty sure in the actual exam, but in an ambush would be in Insidious. So something happened to them. They probably fell into an ambush or something just by assuming. And now let's have a look at the other clauses we've got. And the really good thing about bracketing is that now you have this two line sentence broken down into distinct parts. And these parts don't overlap with each other. Tribu ni militum is by itself. Perfecti tu capa nantes que is by itself, right? It's not going to have a say randomly in here. So even though there's no real word order in Latin, the way they've arranged it means that you do have these distinct phrases that you can rely upon. So, tribuni militum is sort of an expansion. So the military tribunes, so a noun or sort of a noun phrase, just adding a bit more to who Titinius and Venusius are. Having set out, we don't need to translate the entire part, but we do know that it's sort of a verb phrase. So it's they've sort of done something beforehand or what they've already embarked on this journey. And the dum with uh, indicative means while, so this is a time phrase. So while they were doing something and while they already did this, these guys fell into an ambush. And if we translate it, if you don't know a word, what I recommend is you don't really need to search it up. I would try and uh, try and bracket off the entire, try and figure out the entire unseen before searching up individual words, especially in the last couple of minutes of reading time, because you want to get that first sentence really fluent, then you can search up words so you can actually translate it straight away. But beforehand, I'd recommend really taking the time to think about the different phrases of the unseen. So essentially, this sentence would be translated as Titinius and Gnusius sort of fell into an ambush. And we look at Tribunium Militum, how does that slot into that main clause? It is the military tribunes. So now we say Titinius and Gnusius, the military tribunes. Perfecti adversus, so having set out against. Feliscos and Capenates are plural, so it would be sort of people. So Felisci and the Capenates. While, so Gerunt is a they, because it's NT, ends in NT. And that means it's implied that Titinius and Gnusius are the subjects. Bellum would be the object, and oftentimes you see Gero Bellum together. So while waging a war, and you have Maiore Animo Quam Concilio. So this is sort of a sub bracket. You know that these parts are together, um, and Geraint goes sort of with Bellum, or with Bellum. And when you have Animo and Concilio, two nouns in the same case, and you have Maiore Quam, you know it's with more spirit, with spirit more than with a plan. And if you think about what that means, which is good to think about, sort of means that they are a bit disorganized and probably fighting more with um, sort of vigor and anger rather than an actual well thought out plan of action. So if you wanted to, you can rearrange the phrases um, to make something more fluent. And you could say something like Titinius and Gnusius, the military tribunes, um, having set out against the Felisci and the Capenates while they were waging a war with spirit more than with a plan uh, fell into an ambush and that would be a translation hope that helps and the second part of the unseen uh, is the vocab now vocab there are different lists out there there's masterman's list there are just general vocab from the oxford and cambridge books those are pretty much the important vocab. I would uh, I used Quizlet a lot for them. My friends made Quizlets, I had Quizlets as well, and we shared them around, and I just did that a lot, and it really helped. Um, and also, when you meet a new word that you think is quite common, then probably add it to your Quizlet as well. And I think that cumulative effect means your vocab gets better really quickly. I struggled with vocab a bit, and it was annoying because you, you have to like search up the word, and it's just more clunky. Whereas if you know what it means, um, it's more fluid, so even though your grammar is really good, you can rearrange it. It's still like quite um, cumbersome if you don't actually know what the word means. So that's how you do well in the Latin unseen. Uh, knowing the grammar, being able to know that this isn't really one big sentence. It's actually one main clause with a verb clause here and a time clause here. And that will really help guide you. And next, picking the correct um, definitions for the words. And a good way of doing that is that the blurb, or I, I don't know what it's called, but that uh, part at the top that gives you context, that's really important helps you know what's going on and oftentimes can guide which which definition you choose for a particular word as well. So really try and understand what's happening in the story. Uh, once you translate it, it should make sense to you uh, in English. And one last thing to note uh, is that people often debate between having fluent English with a literal translation. 
I would usually opt towards having a literal translation, um, but you don't want it to sound like too jerky. So I'll translate every word, but I might rearrange phrases or um, pick a better definition for a word if it flows better with the sentence. But I wouldn't really like cut out words just for the sake of making it sound conversational in English. Part two, comprehension and poetry. For me, this just really came from having comprehensive notes. I'll show you guys a picture of my notes now. As you can see, there's a lot of comprehension and poetry to understand, and I wouldn't recommend memorizing them because it's very impractical. And what I would do is memorize the key parts. So some things like similes don't occur much. If you find chiasmus is hard or a particular chiasmus difficult, then um, write that down and sort of test yourself, see whether you can find it in that line. Also, scansion. Um, I think scansion is a really good example of uh, uh, sort of how I prepared for this section in general. And that is, you know, you don't memorize the scansion of every single line. You figure out how to do scansion properly and um, you sort of memorize them for difficult lines or for exceptions. And that's how I prepared for comprehension and poetry as well. So for poetry, I knew I could find most chiasmuses. I knew I could find um, in German as well, that's pretty obvious. But for the hard ones, I would make a note of them in my book because those are the ones that I was mo more likely to forget. Whereas mem memorizing every single one would not be a practical use of your time. For comprehension, I think it's more specific. Um, it might be good actually to make a Quizlet. Uh, how I did it was I kind of knew most of them. And once again, some of them I found difficult. I couldn't remember that well. And so I just wrote them down and committed them to memory. So the general gist of this whole section is to uh, know how to find them yourself, um, but have the hard ones sort of memorized because it might be hard to think in the spot and you might not notice it. And the second aspect to comprehension and poetry is actually answering questions. I don't think comprehension is that hard. Just sort of get to the crux of the matter and um, just give a very complete answer, all the details of that person who's being referred to. Um, but with the poetry, I'd say you need to be really, really specific. So for example, um, something like enjambment gives you, gives you emphasis on that first word. And so you wouldn't want to just say it gives emphasis to that word. You would want to say, you know, it gives emphasis to um, the great magnitude of the shield that lies on Aeneas's back. You want to use really specific, very vivid imagery to make your answer stand out from other people's and not seem generic. Admittedly, you know, a lot of the techniques do do the same thing, emphasize or um, produce a greater effect or really highlight to the reader. But by um, saying that by itself, you'll probably lose marks just for being generic. So you really want to make it specific to who, what um, is actually happening in that line. Finally, the essay section. Essays are a little hard in um, Latin, honestly. I, I found them a little bit weird at the start and I didn't, didn't do that well in them. Um, but I guess there are two components to this. One, sort of preparing for the essay. And secondly, actually writing the essay. So in terms of preparation, what I recommend is really thinking about the key themes of your book that you're studying. I think it's book oh, book two for you guys. And and so I would think about the themes. So some themes I think are sort of prophecy, um, are the gods, are the panates. And so identifying in your book where those themes recur. Actually, I think you should know everything that happens in your book. But identifying in the other books where themes of the gods, of the panates, of fate occurs again and making a list of them and then sort of committing them to memory as well because you'll have to use them a lot. Uh, good things to do are to test yourself on which book each moment is for. I think it's good to be able to say, you know, this um, example of uh, Jupiter, Jupiter, what do you call it? Jupiter criticizing Juno on a cloud happens in book 12, I think. Um, and knowing which book it comes from is useful. You can know a few Latin quotes as well. I knew a couple which I wasn't able to use in the exam because it wasn't appropriate for that prompt. Um, but knowing a couple can help a little bit as well. Finally, actually writing the essay. I think everything that applies with English, having clear writing, um, you just want to explain the moments well and explain how they relate to the topic and also be very, very careful because there are not a lot of things that happen in the Aeneid that everyone knows because not everyone reads like every single book. You sort of just know the main moments of the book. It's important that you pick out ones that are relevant to the topic. The examiners are really on the watch out for people who just put in any moments and try and you know force them in. I'd say even more strict than English 
In Latin, you really want to only pick the ones that are relevant to your topic and arrange them in a semi-logical uh, body paragraph structure. And just by explaining them well, showing what they contribute to the topic, whether they're saying a need is PS or whether it's impious, um, those factors and that argument will help you do well in the exam. Uh, also, be careful with how many marks, because there's usually two questions. If a question's worth less, obviously don't write as much for it. And also I'd say the um, time they give on the exam they recommend you have is not enough to write a good essay and a lengthy essay. Um, my times in the unseen were much shorter and so I had a lot more time for my uh, actual essay section. So I do think you need like a good 45 minutes to write a solid essay. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Good luck for your Latin exam. It's an incredibly rewarding subject. Hopefully some of you do continue to learn a bit of Latin in the future. I'm tutoring it now, so I still find I'm able to sort of know it. I still know it. Um, and it is incredibly satisfying, especially the translation aspect of it. Um, good luck for your Latin exam, which when this is released, I think might be in two days. Um, and also for the rest of your exams as well. And I look forward to seeing you all next time, whether that's in a video or in one of my lives. See you.